Welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to individuals that are wanting to have a successful accounting, bookkeeping, or tax business. In fact, the Premier Accounting Firm in their area. This podcast actually has a variety of episodes committed to helping you with things that range from the ideas and topics of marketing and sales, pricing, offering quality accounting services, onboarding clients, client relations, additional services such as offering mentoring, coaching, consulting, and advisory services. We get into conversations with the experts to find out what it is you can do in your business to work on your business as you're starting, building, and growing the premier accounting firm in your area. All this is intended to give you the tips and tricks that you need in order to get paid what you're worth. Now today, I'm the host, Roger Connect, the president of Universal Accounting Center, and I have an amazing guest with me. This happens to be Robin Mons. She is the a certified life and weight coach, and essentially as a professional wife and mother, she understands the challenges that come with balancing these three and the mental blocks that keep you from taking the action you deserve. So Robin believes that your brain is the most important tool, powerful tool that you have on the planet, and that learning how to manage your brain is the most important thing that you can do to create lasting results that you want in your life. Using the latest cutting edge tools in the industry combined with her ability to connect and lead with compassion, she has helped many people succeed in achieving their goals beyond what they thought were possible. She has her greatest joy in watching her clients grow and evolve into what they most want to be in the world. Robin currently lives in Riverton, Utah with her husband, Tyler and four kids ranging in age from right now nine to 20 and has a, a codependent pup, Dirk the Doodle. So basically, Robin, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. I am here with my codependent pup at my feet. So happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so if we hear any yiping, we know exactly why. Yes, exactly. I'm hoping he behaves and is quite, he usually is. That is wonderful. Now, this is kind of an interesting topic because sometimes we're having accounting professionals come on, individuals that have had accounting businesses of their own. You're in an interesting situation because you work with accounting professionals. And as you work with accounting professionals, deal perhaps with some of the unspoken things that typically are going on in their lives as they're working to build their businesses. So I'm going to back up a little bit and give it some context. Why did you get into the profession that you're in now where you're actually a coach? I'm just kind of curious what brought you to the point that you're actually now able to offer these services. What happened in your life to put you to this position? Yeah, I, um, I've always loved people and been curious about them and how we behave and what affects us and um, very into self-improvement. Um, and that's kind of the baseline of my natural interests. And I have always had also a soft place in my heart for mental illness and for um, those sorts of challenges. And so I had my own uh, situation, some of my own challenges with uh, one of my children, actually, that really, really challenged me. And I just studied and studied and tried to um, work those things out. I wasn't functioning as well as I normally was. I was sleeping a lot during the day to kind of avoid some of the grief that I was going through. I just wasn't doing very well. So I kind of clawed my way out and through that process came across the life coaching principles taught by the life coach school. And it just, everything clicked. And I knew that this was something I wanted to help other people do to feel better in their lives, no matter what the circumstances are, and to um, learn these um, skills to help them do just that. and really to up-level our modern mental health is a huge part of it as well. So two things, uh, having gone through similar experiences where as an individual, you're dealing with your own personal challenge. And from that, you kind of learn, you have this ambition to figure out for yourself how you can get out of the funk that you're in. Yeah. You go through this process of, of trying to answer and get a, a way out. You're, you're clawing, as you described it, out of this hole that you're in. But one of the things that's fascinating is in this process, I would imagine that you also experience not just a learning where you learn certain principles and processes, but I'm assuming that you also had some individuals that were able to play an instrumental part in that process. Uh, tell me about what it was like to kind of open your, uh, yourself up and be vulnerable with someone else as they were now coaching you as you were beginning this process. Oh, for sure. And that, that's such a good point. And that's what I love so much about 
you know, humanity and how we need each other and how we, we're there at certain crossroads to help each other through. Um, my friend had mentioned a certain podcast to me of another life coach, and it was about parenting, and I was very resistant. I was like, I, all I'm going to do is listen to this, and it's going to tell me all, all more things I need to do that probably aren't going to work. And it took me about a year to open up to that, to be honest. And once I did, it wasn't at all what I expected. And she became, you know, I, I, I hired her as a coach. She became extremely instrumental in my, in my journey and in my healing. And the vulnerability, yeah, is to be honest and tell the truth of, I'm not really happy with things in my life right now. I don't feel like I'm in very good control. And I, I don't see myself making this better on my own. And when you can open up and know, and the very first thing that she taught me and helped me understand is me going through this problem doesn't mean there's something wrong with me or even my life, right? She just really normalized that this is, these struggles are part of being a human. We tend to think when we're not happy with something in our life or when something isn't going our way, that something is wrong, that something has gone terribly wrong. And when we have that feeling inside, we're just bucking against it. We are sleeping. <laughs> you know, that was one of my coping mechanisms. We're doing everything to get away from it. And she helped me face it and go through it and really get better before anything changed with my child. And that was extremely empowering. And I just, from then on, was like, I, I've got to put this out into the world. This is what I'm going to do as well. You know, there, there's so much in what you just shared. One of the things that I want to just draw attention to is you were bringing up this, this uh, standard that I think a lot of times we self-impose, which is what am I supposed to be as a mother, as a wife, as a, as a business owner, as an accounting professional? You can go down the list of the, the, let's say, the qualifications or what the embodiment of some of those things are and realize all of a sudden that uh, we're all on a journey. We all start and we get to where we are. And along the way, a lot of people experience what's referred to as imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Um, it's where you don't feel you're good enough or qualified, or you're maybe not in a position where you can say or do something because of the self-doubt that comes in. And so I like how you were sharing how you were needing to become vulnerable. You needed to admit a few things, but was what was perhaps the most important thing that I took from what you shared is the fact that you finally submitted and realized I, I needed help and somebody could have perspective and with that perspective, give me the insights that I'm needing to actually change the situation I'm in. So I like how you were describing all that. So obviously, this put you in a position where you wanted to pay it forward, give back. You wanted to be a part of uh, helping people and making their lives better. So I want to go back to where we met. And it was, I don't even remember how long ago it was. It was over a year mm -hmm. ago, I guess. But we met, and I think what I saw in you was this genuine interest of helping people kind of figure out their crap and get in a positive mindset. I don't know if that's how you would necessarily <laughs> put it, but but that's exactly what it was. And, and it was one of those things where I felt you had so so much to offer. It was clear that you were in that giver's, you know, that giver's mentality. So let me ask, what is it that you see as you work with people? especially a lot of the accounting professionals that you do now, what do you see that they struggle with the most? Yeah, um, the thing that I see the most, the universal thing, um, no matter who I'm coaching, if we boil things down to it seems to be, like you said, the imposter syndrome, also known as, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. What if I'm not good enough for this? And that is it just seems to be something that touches each of us in one way or another or through a certain challenge that comes up. And I, so I see that. And I also see, especially with the accounting professionals, perfectionism. They love the predictability of numbers. They like that everything adds up and that it gives you the perfect solution, that it's, it's not subjective, right? That there it is all clean, but they also mirror that to themselves, that same expectation 
of what kind of professional they're supposed to be. And I do a lot of work with perfectionism in that regard. So is that one of the mental blocks that you think they're usually struggling with? Oh, absolutely. Right. It sounds like this. I can't miss a thing. I can't screw this up. If I mess this up, then basically it boils down to my whole career will be, you know, in shambles. And what's interesting is I take them through, I was just doing this with someone the other day, and there's this fear that, again, I might mess this up. I've got to do a good job. I've got to be on. And I said, well, what happens if, if you make a mistake? What could potentially happen? Well, then, you know, I'll lose that account and they'll probably tell everyone. And I said, okay, well, who's everyone? And in their mind, where your mind goes, his reputation had already swept across the entire country and every other, you know, every person who is hiring somebody is looking for an accounting professional is going to know about him and not want to do business with him, right? That's where his mind went. And when we, we just questioned that and looked at it, it's very unlikely that that scenario could happen, right? That the, your reputation will be swept across the whole world and that's the end for you. But when you are in this belief, I can't mess this up, I can't fail at this or else, and, and you think about your reputation getting ruined, that is where your mind is going to take you and you just lock yourself down. And the irony is it doesn't have you showing up any sharper. It doesn't, it actually just freezes you up and paralyzes you. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I also notice is just as you're describing this, this mental block is there are people that aren't willing to, to uh, fail or yeah. make a mistake. And so that in the accounting world is oftentimes a barrier to entry. A lot of people just don't get into this profession or grow their business, offer new services, become more aggressive in the marketplace simply because they hold themselves back, which is for the rest of us a good thing simply because it means the opportunity is there. So I, I like how you describe that. Now, one of the things that I know you do is you you do have kind of a process that you use with the uh, accountants to actually help them reconcile this. Tell me about how you would come about introducing or helping them see that there is a way to cope. Well, first I help them understand their brain. And many times just understanding why you go to that, you know, resistance to fail or to perfectionism, just understanding that about yourself and that there's not something wrong with you is just a relief in the first place. So I teach them about the motivational triad and how that's that is the lower part of our brain, that survival-driven part of your brain that all it cares about is your survival is motivated by three things. And it's to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and to conserve energy. Those are all uh-huh. survival activities. And that is what it's constantly looking out for and being motivated by. And so, of course, you don't want to feel the you know pain of being embarrassed or humiliated because you messed up. And your brain is going to see that as a actual threat, right? It could mean death. It can't differentiate between physical pain and emotional pain. So when we're in business and we're taking, you know, putting ourselves out there and taking risks and um, taking care of people's money, you know, and putting all that pressure on ourselves, we're going to, that part of your brain is going to be very resistant and not want to do those things. It's not gonna wanna take action that could potentially result in emotional pain for you. And so that is why we get anxious. That is why we try to be perfectionist so that we can avoid the pain of potentially failing or whatever emotion that comes when things don't work out how we want. And so that's the first thing I teach them. And and then we recognize, I explain each one and, and and I'll ask them, which one do you see in you? that tends to get in your way. For example, for me, I am very motivated to conserve energy. I I don't like that hustle word. I don't like to work hard. I don't like to have a ton of things on my plate, (laughs) right? And so when I see a project or see something, my brain automatically is like, oh, that looks like a ton of work. That'll take forever. And I, now I know this about myself and I'm able to separate me from this survival part of myself and just recognize it, but I don't have to believe it and obey it. I can override it and say, yeah, I get it. 
I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this one step at a time. And before I know it, I'll be done. So I teach them how to watch for those things, but then also how to respond and override that part of you so that you can continue taking action. So you work with a lot of the accounting professionals that we work with to help them as they're starting and building their businesses. And I love that part of the services we offer at Universal include you as a life coach, because there's a difference between wanting to start the accounting business and understand accounting, understand tax, and be able to offer those services and having the mental fortitude to actually now deal with some of the entrepreneurial things that will come up as you're going about starting your business, marketing and selling and onboarding new clients. So having access to you is amazing, but there's something here that I think a lot of people would really benefit from. And that is you found over the last, you know, I don't know how many years that oftentimes there's a unique thing with women that you tap into where they're trying to deal with life balance, let's call it. Tell me about what you're finding a lot of people struggle with as they realize there's a lot of roles that they have in life, whether it's husband, wife, mother, father, now this business owner, and there's this tug of war that's going on emotionally or mentally. Tell me about that and what you're what you're seeing and experiencing as you're talking to people. Yes, I, I see it. And I think I sniff it out real quick because I've experienced it myself. You know, I was full time. Um, home with my children and started my business in my, you know, as I turned 40 and I had this wrestle and what it comes down to. And I, the pattern I see, especially with women who are mothers and business is feeling that people in your family are missing out now because you are, you are working on your business. Your business takes away from your children and what what that does is it pins you it, it it pins you you up against your business. So I would go from resenting my business for taking time away when my kids would, you know, be disappointed that I was working or request something of me and I couldn't fulfill it right away. So I'd resent my business, but then I'd also because I felt such shame around not being available every second they needed me, I would feel resentful for them because they asked me to do something and I can't, and now I feel horrible and, ugh, you know, so it was just always this, it was the business taking away from me and needing, it was another thing in my life that needed me. And I, and I see that in the same way. And there's a word that I use with this that has been really helpful to me and to clients. And it's a very simple word and it's, and I can I can run a successful business. I can build my business and I can be the type of mom I want to be. And when we make that piece and we have space for both, and it's not me constantly choosing one over the other, then we can be resourceful and we can see how that's possible. And we can make sure that we have our priorities straight and all of that, but there's room for both. And it's not either or. Very very important breakthroughs with just the word and, and then we move forward and talk about what that looks like. And we inquire after beliefs. I just had a client I was working with last week who this very topic came up and we revealed that she has this belief that I should meet every single one of my children's needs. Whenever they need me, I should be immediately available. Well, she didn't recognize, you know, that's kind of the subconscious thing that she's thought and that's shaped her identity as a mom. But now that you're, you're starting a business and you have this belief that you're supposed to meet every single need, well, either the, the belief needs to be reshaped and looked at, or you're going to be in war between the two because you'll see the business as taking away from this and preventing you from being the kind of mom you want to be. Yeah, you'll resent it. Exactly. So here's something that I think you'll remember. Um, I shared with you a while ago um, this analogy of the uh, person spinning plates on a stick. Do you recall this at Mm -hmm, all? mm -hmm. So one of the things that I learned years ago is, and this was um, something I shared with Robin recently, and it's essentially the, the natural tendency that we have in our cultures and our societies is that there's a lot of roles that we can take on, and there's a lot of things that we self-impose that are expected upon us. 
Uh, it could be that I'm supposed to be taking care of my outside yard. I'm supposed to, you know, plant the flowers and weed, and I'm supposed to mow the lawn. On top of that, I'm supposed to be the handyman in the house. I'm supposed to be the the great spouse. I'm supposed to be the great parent. I'm supposed to be the business owner. I've got to be an a con, an excellent marketer and salesperson. I've got to be the excellent producer. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And one of these uh, uh, principles that I've learned is you've got to identify what plates are most important. And using the analogy of the plates on a stick that you've maybe seen where someone places, uh, places a plate on a stick and with the uh, momentum of the stick, with the inertia of it moving around, can keep the plate spinning and not fall. Well, the first question is, is how many plates can you realistically, comfortably keep up on there? And sometimes what it takes is the willingness to delegate and ask mm-hmm. other people to do it. It's, it's where you're maybe asking someone to come in and mow your lawn for you. Or maybe actually step in and help you with taking care of the clients that you have. That's hiring an employee. Maybe it's having a, an outsourced service come in and actually take care of something related to maybe marketing online. I, I can't give the perfect example only to say that as individuals, we have to recognize that there is only so much we can do in the 24 hours of the day. And we have to do what we can well But we don't have to be overwhelmed by it. And that's where I think your services and your ability as a life coach step in to help assess through the right questions, what are those things that we ought to be doing and doing well? So I love what you're doing. So here's my next question then. Who as a mentor to you and why made a big difference? You know, what what did you learn from them? Jody Moore is the the podcast that I Uh, mentioned earlier, she is a life coach. And, you know, again, I thought I, everything I'd heard before about, you know, parenting was just giving you action items, do this, do that, try this better, you know, try this strategy. And I was maxed out. I I wasn't, I didn't want to hear one more thing I needed to do to try to make my circumstance better. And what she did was, it, it was nothing to do with doing taking action. It was, let's see what you're thinking. Let's learn how to feel what you're feeling. And the, the principle I learned that what I learned from that is that it's my thoughts that are creating my feelings, my feelings of grief and of bitterness and of resentment, all of those things I recognize weren't actually being caused by my child's behavior. And that was extremely freeing to me because if that, that's true, if his behavior is what's causing my emotions and, and how I'm feeling, then I can only feel as good as how he's behaving in the moment. Yep. And she taught me how to get my power back, that my child could be my child and that I have the power and the control of how I feel because I can choose how I want to think. And that, that had me bringing up a lot of my beliefs that were causing me pain, such as mothers who are good have children who love and respect them. Well, I have a child who's not acting respectful, so I must not be a good mother, right? It had me bring up all these beliefs that I had that worked for a time until suddenly my child's acting different and, and I was just in such unrest. And it allowed me the opportunity to let go of a lot of them. Your thoughts are always optional and they feel so factual. I feel like I was telling you just the news of the day of like, I, I did something wrong. You know, I didn't do enough for him or whatever it is that, you know, I was feeling. We just think that's the truth, but our thoughts are always optional. And we have that opportunity to look at them and question them. And does it serve me? That's one of my favorite questions to ask when I'm coaching does this thought serve you? Does it produce the emotion that drives the type of behavior you're wanting and which results in your reality? Are you, do you like that? Is it useful? And I was able to question a lot of those beliefs that I had about what a mother was and what, it, what how children should behave. And then I was able to create my own that still felt you know, truthful and right, but that gave me a whole different feeling. And really what I shifted to was acceptance rather than feeling constantly resentful and angry at him. I accepted him more and I accepted me more. And that completely changed 
how I behaved and my inner state. So I'm so grateful to her to, for showing me, and that all happens in the brain, right? How we're thinking and then how we think creates that emotion, th- those chemicals released in our body. She taught me what was happening in my mind and what was creating my pain and that I was the one all along who had the power to make it, you know, make it different, have a different experience of it. And that is exactly what happened. He continued to behave the way he did, but I started to feel different and behave differently and have different results in my life. You know, I love that you shared that because I could relate on so many levels. Um, Just to kind of share a similar story. It was in my 20s that I was able to, through a number of books and people I associated with, change from having a pessimistic attitude to being an optimist and seeing opportunity and love and support and just see how good life is. And before that, I was in a darker place in uh, in my teens and so forth. Not that I was uh, always uh, depressed, but I can definitely say that I wasn't seeing the blessings around me and the, the good around me. And so in my 20s, that changed. It wasn't until my 30s that I realized how much I could independently be happy. Um, I, I was very much affected by the people around me. My, I let my spouse dictate my emotions and feelings. My children dictate my feelings and emotions, my employer dictate. And all of a sudden I realized in my thirties, I can consciously choose to be happy and Uh, it just insulated me from so much of the negativity that was oftentimes going on around me, whether it be at home or at work uh, with friends. And all of a sudden, I just became at peace. And in my 30s, that peace was so liberating. All of a sudden, just realizing how good life is, how wonderful a country and time of the world I live in and the people I know and associate with. I was just so grateful for so much. And so gratitude became such an important part of my life. And then in my 40s, This was kind of a a very big part of my change professionally. It was this pivotal moment where I had just, it was almost instantaneous. I was able to recognize all of the professional successes and accolades that we had had, that, that our company had had and myself individually, that I believed I was finally now in a position to give back and help other people basically implement the same strategies, apply the same principles and have the same success in their companies. So all of a sudden I was now at this give back moment where I could really benefit and bless the people around me. And so I distinctly, it's almost like to the day, to the moments, I can see specific things that occurred in my twenties, in my thirties and in my forties that have allowed me to get to the point now where I have this abundant, very much a gratitude mindset that I'm able to now give back to others. And I just see blessings and opportunities around me. And I just want to point them out to everyone and have them see and be as happy as I feel I am. So I really do identify with what you're sharing. Oh, thank you. That's a beautiful evolution you just took us through from your 20s till now. And what most of us do, and I was certainly caught up in that, is we go through life trying to change our circumstances, trying to change the world around us, the people, right? Like you said, I was responding to my wife's emotions. So what what do we want to do? Well, we try to keep making them happy and we try to change how they are and how they respond to us. And you were able to make that pivot into, oh, this is my own inner work. I can decide no matter what is going on out here, who I want to be, how I want to think, and that is what has allowed you to get to where you are today. And th- but it's human nature to want to change the external things. Oh yeah. So we can feel better. You know. You know. I, I've got a daughter, and uh, for her, everything's a ten. It it, it, mm. it there's nothing that is. It, it, there's nothing subtle. It's everything is a ten, and I mean to say that she just makes everything a big deal. And I always have to just basically say, are you really trying to tell me that this is that big of a deal? It's that important? She's like, yes, it's that important. And I'm like, okay, that's not not exactly how important I think it ought to be. But okay. (sighs) But notice in her world, in her her mind, that's a very, very important thing that she's dealing with. To me, I don't have to go to that level. It doesn't have to become a 10 for me. It's like, okay, well, all right. And when I'm able to, with people that I'm associated with, 
kind of see it through my own eyes rather than through theirs, I've, I've been able to maintain my peace. Now, it's not to say I'm indifferent to the situations around me and I'm, I'm not insensitive. It's just, sure. a, it just means that I've recognized that I can recognize the positive around me and stay in a positive giving mindset. I, I want gratitude to always be a part of who I am. And so that's something that's very important to me personally, because that's where I find my happiness. So anyways, I, let, yeah. let, let me go to the next thing. This is something that I think is, is very important. Mm -hmm. With regards to your working with accounting professionals, what advice would you have to them as they're stepping outside of their comfort zones and they're in a position of doing something that maybe not be comfortable, whether it be marketing, sales, offering coaching services, you know, whatever the case may be, what is it that you would have as advice for them? When you're thinking about something you're wanting to, yeah, expand in your business or um, making an offer, I notice that many of them are imagining all the people who are not a good fit for what they're offering or who already are receiving the same services from someone else. And it's so fun to take and shift their mind to, you know, you, the, the people you need to envision as you think about the services you're offering, as you're thinking about your marketing, you need to picture the people in your mind who are actively searching for you, who need exactly what you're offering. That is who you're speaking to in your marketing. That is who you're thinking about as you develop your systems and as you are working. You need to think about the people who are in need of you and who are act actively searching for someone like you. Your brain tends to think about all the unavailable people, the people who are not interested, the people who think you're too expensive, the people who already have somebody else doing it, or people. you're thinking about people who are more experienced who they're probably going to go with. That is where your brain will default to. And so be very intentional and you will notice the, the reason why I love sharing this with um, in the coaching is they just get the biggest smile on their face and such relief because sure enough, that's where their brain is thinking about other people who aren't available and don't want them. Because the truth is not everyone does want what you have to offer, but there are so many people who are. Picture them. What, how are they going to find you? What do you need to say to them? How do you, where do you need to show up so you can align with them so you can just let them know, hey, I'm here and I can help you. That just gives such relief and, and the burden of having to say things just right and to pick the perfect price and, and all of that. It's just such a better way and a more inspiring way to approach marketing and your content. Wonderful. I love that. That is so good. So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to mention a quick little offer here that everyone can go to the episode description to take advantage of. And then I'm going to come back with a, a few fun questions that I think we can go through real quickly. Uh, the first thing is the uh, offer here that we have with the sponsor, Universal Accounting. You just need to go to the episode description and there find out more about coaching, what the coaching services are that Universal can provide, and more importantly, find out about Robin and what it is that Robin does for accounting professionals to help them in this transition of starting and building their businesses. In the coaching that we offer, it's important to realize that with Universal Accounting Center, all the programs come with, first and foremost, an orientation counselor to help you actually go through the, prog the programs offered and implement them in your business. They come with an academic coach to work as a tutor to help you actually understand and more importantly, apply these principles with your business and your clients. And then lastly, a business coach to help you actually, from a business perspective, put these into place. Now, this all is complemented by a life coach, someone that as you're going through and actually dealing with the inner challenges, the, the as we were talking earlier, the mental blocks that come in, the self-doubt doubt that may occur, you're able to actually push through those things, realizing that you have a coach on your uh, side helping you actually deal with the mental challenges that may arise as you're working forward or moving forward with your company. So go to the episode description, find out more about the coaching and the support that's provided by Universal Accounting Center so that you can literally be in business for yourself, but not by yourself and see essentially how Robin is a key part of that entire experience. Now, with regards to this, Robin, I've got a few quick, fun questions for you. So right. first of all, I'm going to ask, what is your favorite word and why? Definitely connection. And it's funny, I love your last name, Connect. 
<laughs> I, I'm jealous. I wish that was my last name. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I had nothing uh, to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so it's so important. It's just a vital, basic need um, of all of us, and also it's what makes me enjoy what I do. The connection with people and helping. And what happens when people feel connected with each other, what we're able to go out and do and explore and develop and grow when we feel that safety. And um, so, yeah, that's my, I have many reasons why that's my favorite word, but connection. I, I love people and I love that we have the ability to create, not just like react to our lives. And I love that I get to use connection to do that for others, to help inspire them. That is awesome. I love what you're sharing there. That is really good. So here's another one. What is your pet peeve? Okay. I, I think there's a name for this, but it's like mouth noises when people eat, especially like scraping your fork against your teeth. So don't worry. I've had lunch with you and you're good, but <laughs> <laughs> like it is really difficult for me to concentrate on anything else when that's going on. That is so funny. My daughter, and she claims, I don't understand it. She says that she is hugely bothered by chewing noises. Mm. So I don't know if that's similar, but she just, she she is always, I can hear you chewing, stop chewing. And, yeah. and, and I don't know if it's mouth open, mouth closed, but something in there obviously <laughs> is what's going on. Kind of yeah. funny. All right. So here's the next thing. What does the word freedom mean to you? I talked about this a little bit, but this is really what it means to me is no one can tell you how to think. No one can tell you in any situation that you have to think a certain way. They're going to offer you thoughts. They're going to tell you what they think. But that to me is true freedom because I believe our thoughts are what ultimately create our reality that ultimately create the results in my life. And so freedom to me is my freedom and right and agency to choose how I think. And as a result, I choose how my life turns out in, in any situation and in any circumstance. You know, I, I really like that. Um, whenever I'm in a new situation, whenever I'm um, in a difficult situation, and I feel like I'm becoming either anxious, or I'm becoming frustrated, uh, just just the sense that, I mean, it's a physical yeah. sense of I'm out of control. I try to focus on, okay, what's good about this? What am I learning about uh -huh. the, from this? What, how am I going to be a better person once this is over? And I'm trying to actually just get my mind to dwell on that there's reason or purpose in what I'm experiencing. There's something I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to learn from this. And if I can just put myself into that mindset, I can almost go through the experience. Oh, yeah. On the side of it, it. Changes it's everything. almost as if, yeah, my my perspective of the experience changes because no longer am I necessarily in it. It's almost like I'm observing it. So yeah, it's a it's a great way to actually go through that. So I like freedom. That's that's really good. Freedom of, of thought. That's great. Um, what's your go to food? You're the weight coach, so <laughs> <laughs> what's your go to food? Well, I accept all foods, but um, good. So I'm Brazilian. I'm half Brazilian. And I love Brazilian food. Give me a good rice and bean dish. I don't know if you've been to Rodizio where they do those meats um, that are amazing. Uh, yeah, Brazilian food. Definitely my favorite. That's right. And interesting fact about you, English is not your first language. Yes. Yeah, true. I came here and had to learn English. I love it. No, that's great. All right. So here's another thing. What is something that you are thankful for? Mm, I am thankful that I'm making a conscious choice to fully experience my life. I, you know, from the lessons I learned, I was constantly running away from any bad feeling, any negativity. And I am come to learn, we, you know, we live in this world where it is true that you do not have to experience any negative emotion if you don't want to. We have substances, we have food, we have distractions, we have at the ready things available to us so that we don't have to be with the unpleasant parts of our life, which is negative emotion. Okay. I choose, and I'm thankful to myself for choosing intentionally to be all in on this life, to feel, which means I am open to feeling the whole scope of it, of, 
emotion. And I have learned how to be with myself in the positive without needing to enhance it with something and also with the negative without needing to escape. I'm just thankful to choose to be fully alive. I love it. When I don't, when I live in a world that I don't have to be. Yeah. All right. So here's, here's a question that I hope I can ask it well, because I, I'm, I'm really interested in your input on this. What makes a good coach? For me, my goal when I meet with people, first of all, I look at the list, you know, who is on my schedule and I just close my eyes and thank them for being there and that I look forward to being with them. And it's to show up and give them space to be wherever they are. I don't have an agenda for my clients. I want to hear from them what their desires are and to um, to listen to them without judgment and with unconditional love and then show them what is in their way. I don't have the answers for the clients. I don't, I rarely, um, in what we call coach on the action, like here's what you need to do go do this and this. I just show them their brain and what's holding them up. And then you know what you need to do. We have everything we're capable of inside of us. We truly do. I don't say that to sound airy fairy. We really have all the solutions to our problems. Our brains are amazing problem solving, problem solving tool. And then we also have our own desires. And I don't know what those are for you. So my goal is to show up, listen to what's going on so I can show you your brain, showing you where what's stopping you from getting where you want to go and doing that from a place of non-judgment and asking you questions, questioning your thoughts, questioning your beliefs that I see that are blocking you and, and watching people like tune into their own wisdom. It's so fun for me. I, I, I just love what you shared because I can identify with those I would describe it as three things. You hit two of the three I would mention. Mm -hmm. The first is creating a safe zone. Mm -hmm. A good coach provides a place where an individual can be vulnerable. Right. And honestly, a, a good coach that doesn't pass judgment, that is willing to just listen, can make a person so comfortable that they're finally able to sometimes figure out for themselves at that very moment, Oh my, oh my heavens, this is what is wrong. And, and this is how I'm seeing things. This is why I'm emotional about this. And once all this, once they have that vulnerability, then they're, I think, teachable. The second thing exactly. I would say is it, it's just like you said, it's the questioning. The business coach, the life coach, I don't care what the coach is. It's that they have the right questions. They know what to say and uh, uh, kind of used to prod the person to think for themselves. And once the individual can think for themselves and own their own thoughts and actions, then they're able to do so much more. So the, a great coach with the perspective they bring to the, the situation asks great questions. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing that I would definitely add into this is accountability. Mm -hmm. um, a great coach basically calls BS on excuses. It's just, you know, what do you want to do? You told me this is important. You said you would be done with this next Tuesday. Why isn't it done? And so those are the three things, the safe zone so that they can be vulnerable, the uh, questions, the good questions, and then lastly, the accountability. So I've got one last thing I want to bring up with you, and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay. When you're working with the um, uh, individuals and you're kind of helping them through this whole process, what success stories do you have? What can you share with us? Just some yeah. some pivots that have occurred. So I I have one that was a student from Universal that when we started there was just so much self doubt and feelings of unworthiness and undeserving and major again, self-doubt that she would actually even complete the program and certification. Well, she was consistent with her, with her sessions. We met every other week. We kept clearing the way with the brain. She had a goal <clears throat> to quit her job at the end of 2021 and was hoping to go part-time in June of 2021. And she put in her two weeks notice um, before February of 2021. She was able to quit her job. She has the clients that she needs. Not only did she get through the certification, of course, 
um, coached her through putting herself out there and getting the clients. So happy for her. So happy. Um, also, I have clients who just come and they feel paralyzed. That's been something we've worked through of just just total fear of doing it wrong. And I have a client who um, had a lot of childhood trauma and we work through this and she has completely blossomed. Like she was completely locked up when she came. She already had a client, but was so fearful because they gave her some more things to do that she didn't know. She was so fearful and wasn't doing the work. And not only did we free her up from that, but her the whole world has opened up for her. She is taking on more than she can, you know, not more than she can handle, but just like things are coming and she's moving forward and getting things done and gaining that confidence. Um, I see, I see clients just generally feeling more hopeful and better in their lives. We're dropping a lot of our past beliefs about ourselves, about who we are. This is just the way I am. And I'm seeing that them come loose from that and taking massive action towards their um, certification and also towards their business. I love it. So one of the things that I think is so true about what you just shared is so often the people that we work with, they get greater clarity as to what they're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. and they're able to realize it quicker than they thought possible. That's oh, truly yeah. what I see time and time and time again. They get clarity as to what they want to do. And once it's clear what they're working towards, they get there faster than they realized is possible. And that's just amazing to me time and time again. So I love it. So let me go ahead and summarize what we've been discussing. And then I'm going to ask for a final thought on your part. So in summary, one of the things that I think is very important to take from this whole discussion is that with Robin, you can definitely be safe and vulnerable simply because of the fact that she has this, this way of helping us work through our mental blocks, the things that we're using as justifications to hold ourselves back, some of the things that we're using as fear to stop us from moving forward. And she's able to actually address those things in a very productive way so that we can actually implement things and accomplish things that maybe we didn't think were possible. So that's one of my big takeaways. The other thing that I would also point out is she can identify with this in, in a very real way. She's She basically had these things in her own life and uh, is willing to admit that it's from those things that she was able to passionately get in to learn how to help others in implementing these various uh, principles and tools in our own lives individually. So I think she's an excellent person to learn from, an excellent person to work with. She's fun to interact with. I think uh, you can definitely tell from our conversation, she's just very comfortable to interact with. But that's something that I'd like to just kind of highlight as we're recapping this. The uh, thing I also want to point out is in the episode description, I did make mention of the fact that you can learn more about the coaching provided by Universal Accounting and more importantly, Robin and what she does with those individuals that she's assigned to work with as their life coach. And uh, perhaps look at what you can do to also tap into her services and take advantage of the things that she does to help you achieve your goals as you're building the premier accounting business in your area. So with all that being said, what are your final thoughts? Do you have anything that you'd like to just wrap this up with? Sure, just a couple of things here. I, I just want everyone to know that they truly are enough. If you have any question, am I enough? Am I deserving? Just make a decision that it's a yes. You don't need to be any better than you are to go after what you want. You don't need to change, you know, you don't need to um, get all your ducks in a row before you can put yourself out there. You are ready now to take the next step into what you're wanting. And lastly, if you have the ability to imagine in your mind a desire, what you want to do with your business, how you want it to impact the world, how many clients you, feel you want, if you have the ability to visualize that in, in your mind, that means you have the capacity to go and make that happen. And you will do this by doing the work of managing your mind and paying attention to the thoughts that you're having and working through those. And yeah, I just want to say, I believe in you. There's enough room in the world for all of us to be successful. And I just wish all of you great success in your business. 
Amen. I love it. Thank you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wrap this up. Thanking you, Robin, for the time that you've spent with us today and the insights that you offered. Uh, for more information about how you can apply these principles in your business, you can visit us at universalaccountingschool.com or give us a phone call at 801 265 3777. And always remember this accounting success is universal. Take care of a great day and be safe out there.